What it do, baby? What's going on, YouTube? How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. You already know who it is. Your host of the most chip player extraordinaire. Yeah. Anyway, new video here. What we're doing here is we're talking about the difference, compare and contrasting Street Fighter 4 versus Street Fighter 5. Uh, this came about from a video from Event Hubs where they kind of compare and contrast within their criteria of what they think makes uh, or which game comes out on top in their little criteria from, you know, balance to, you know, single player content, replayability, or I think it was, yeah, they had a, a bunch of different things, man. Bottom line, I go over this after watching it because I did have some words after watching it and, uh, yeah, a lot to say. I'll admit, maybe some of what I had to say might have been a little bit biased towards Street Fighter 4 because I did play Street Fighter 4 a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more than Street Fighter 5. Sorry, as a Viper player, moving on to Ibuki, Yang, and Guy. Yeah, definitely spent a lot of time with that game. So, without further ado, don't forget, a lot of you guys who watch the videos are not actually subscribed to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Stay up to date with everything, anything going on with this channel. Anyway, to the footage. Street Fighter 4 versus Street Fighter 5. All right, so let me, let me, let me touch base on some of the points that were mentioned here. So I think one of the biggest things is like, I do think from looking at it from a gameplay perspective, I think. What makes Street Fighter 4 win in this category is because you can exert a form of control over the match because of things like option selects. And if there wasn't, if I, I think if that didn't exist, I think it would be a bit of a different story, which is why, you know, people were clapping in this thing, they're clapping Street Fighter 5. I think Street Fighter V from a commitment standpoint is like good, but I also think in some cases it's kind of bad. It's good because you, you, you have to commit to your options, but it's bad because like, you know, you don't have another layer in some cases, right? In some cases you don't have another layer to like play around. If that makes sense. You don't, you don't have that. So you have to commit to your options. You can't play it. There are some option selects, but you can't. I feel like I feel like you can't play it. Like in four, because you can, can exert that kind of control, is why I think Street Fighter Four can overall win in the gameplay department because it's a lot more technical in regards to the things you need to know to play it at a high level. I think that's kind of at least that's how I see it. That's true. I can definitely remove a lot of the high level stuff. I think in some ways having office selects is good because you have to learn to minimize the random because the thing is it kind of, in some cases, knowing the OS's to take the good versus the bad players in a lot of, in a lot of cases. But like I said before, when you play this, this game at that, at that level, like everyone knows about the office selects. So like, to be honest with you, most people tend to block the office selects. It's only at the, like, maybe like under highest level is when the OS's are really strong. Most people who complained about it, it's because they didn't want to do the simple thing, which was just block. A good chunk of the op selects in Street Fighter 4 are literally just block. Like, I don't, and I, and, and unless you're dealing with the unblockable situations, then that's different, right? But like, there's a lot of OS's in Street Fighter 4 where if you literally just block, you wouldn't get hit. Like people will complain about, oh, I, I, my, my backdash got sweeped, whatever, on wake up. Just block. You would not get hit. Just take the medium, block the rest of the pressure. Because the worst case scenario is strike throw, right? Not everyone had amazing command grabs and crouch tech still exists. So the layers of defense are actually really good in Street Fighter 4 overall when you break it down, right? The new words is interactions, right? Interactions, quote unquote, in this game, literally revolve around you just being patient like there is a master class of footsies in this game that are shown 
in a lot of matches Street Fighter 4. I can't necessarily say the same for Street Fighter 5 because the footsies in that game are so volatile. When it's in Street Fighter 4, the volatile footsies are very minute because they shut down something. But a lot of the times, like take for Elena for example, we all know Elena just kind of dumps her the game. But the thing about it was she pecked and prodded at people to the point to where like it shut down a lot of options. It didn't mean that you couldn't beat her, it's just that she shut down those options really well, very easily. I think that's kind of why people had a lot of beef with her because she shuts down the options very easily. But, and her buttons are good. So, obviously. But, like, even when you pull back and just look at the game objectively, there's nothing in the game where you can't beat by just holding block. Even when they removed the unblockable, right? Or made them harder to do because of, like, delay tech. That maybe about to think about the Oki a little bit more, but I think when you still break that down, even if even before you get to the vortex, you can't vortex no one until you get the hit. And at the highest level, no one just lets you get vortex for free. It's that literally every level underneath high level is going to get vortex more often than not and lose for it. You know. But when you're playing it at that level, it's pretty much common knowledge to just chill. So, literally, like, I can't stress it enough, like, most things in Street Fighter 4, honestly, are easy to block. When you really, really break it down, most things are easy to block outside of the unblockable situations, generally speaking. So, I feel like defense is just good in the game, and I think it can be appreciated because, you know, again, it's why I think there's no alpha counter. I think if it had guard crush, it'd make defense a little bit weaker. But even without it, like, there's other ways to open up your opponent in the game. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing about Street Fighter in general, right? Like, at, the, at its core, it turns out to be defensive, right? At the end of it all. Adding things like Guard Crush opens up more tension and makes it so defense isn't just, just down backing for free. I think, and that's what makes Street Fighter 4, I think in some cases, it can be a little bit wonky because defense is so good. And it's because things are easy to block is why I think in the, at the end game that this game maybe could have used Guard Crush. Because most things are easy to block, generally speaking. But it not having it isn't the end of the world. It's just you have to be better at neutral. So it teaches you something different. This is why I don't really, I don't, when I look at it now, it's not even Rose Tits. It's just being objective about it. It's like, it's not necessarily that bad. Like, it has its own set of tension, and it's because what makes the tension in this game is who's gonna who's gonna make the mistake first. And I think that the level of like skill it takes to play that game, especially when it's not a high damage game, it's like a midish damage game, you know? You make mistakes, you pay for it, but you get to recuperate. You get to reevaluate. But the thing about it is, it, during the reevaluation period of the game and its gameplay, you could be thrown in a corner, and that could be that, that could be disaster, right? You just use Fei Long. Fei Long. If he hits you with record, you're going to get tossed to the corner, you know, and that could be disaster for you, you know, so you have to play that mid range game very, very well. I won't say precisely, but very well, you're going to make mistakes, but like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think when I, when I break it down from that, from that standpoint, I do feel like the footsies of four or in most cases, vastly superior than five. I think five footsies are getting better now, but the problem with the footsies in five is, it's, it's in some cases. It's a little too preemptive. There's definitely whiff punishing, but I think most of the game is a lot more preemptive than it is, you know, reactive. I think it's it has reactive now. Before it got to this point, I think the reactive was too hard because the buttons you would whiff punish, they have too good recovery. Right? Like the recovery is too good. So take for example, one one was very common. Stand fierce with Yurian. People would complain about it. And it's rightfully so because it's ridiculously hard to whiff punish. You know, they added recovery frames later. So it's like, you know, how do you whiff punish a move that comes out so fast and gives such a high reward in neutral? You know? So without being able to whiff punish it properly, like at that stage, what it, like what are you doing? You know, you have to wait for it to whiff and then try to take your turn on block. Does that make sense? Like, you're not punishing the move, so you have to take your turn with a block or advance or take real estate. You have to take another reward which makes it even more stressful because jumping while it's good, if you preemptively jump and they're not doing it that normal, you get lifted and you can die for it. Like, 
there's too many ways you, you can die in neutral in Street Fighter V without, it, at least early on Street Fighter V, there's too many ways to die in neutral without having, how to put it, I'm not necessarily counterplay, but like you don't have the ability early on, it was a lot harder to like take advantage of those whiffs, if that makes sense. Like if you whiff in Street Fighter 4, you, you can die for it. But you won't die, you'll just be put in a bad position, which you can bl then block out and then just be patient and pick and pick and choose your spots to take your turn back. It happens in five, but I think they added the thing that I think that should have been there instead of it being guard crush, they added white life, which is okay. And it makes the jab seem more substantial. So like they, they did things to make it so when things that are light connect or just in, any, any set of offense could have a reward despite them blocking. So it's kind of a, yeah, input delay is definitely an issue too. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that too, Jazz. Like it's harder to whiff punish because lag too, right? But if you play on the perfect Arturo, you know, Sanchez setup, AKA Savin setup, AKA NYC Furby setup, you'll, you'll whiff punish like a god. <laughs> it's a shame most people play on console. Oh yeah, pre-patch, oh. <laughs> Free, oh god, when we had the eight frames, when Nash was dashing around like a freaking. When Nash was having a ball, oh yeah. The only character that plays Street Fighter, technically speaking, properly outside of like Chun. But I agree. I agree. I'm with you. So. Yeah. I think now it's better, right? I think. I think now it's still better, right? But if we, if we go backwards in time, yeah, I think that's an issue. So they had to fix that as they went along. Yeah, I agree. Stubby normal is also a thing, and the hitbox issues are still a thing as well. I think my issue with 5 isn't so much that the game isn't fun. I think I think you have to play with certain people to see that game at its best. I think unless you're playing, uh, maybe I, it's an overstatement here. Maybe if you're not if you're not playing within, within like master rank or something like that in that game, just generally speaking, or playing with people who are really good at it offline, I feel like it's hard to see what makes that game good. It's why I love watching Daigo and Tokido play because I feel like they play the game right, or even just Japan as a whole, plus Punk and some of the other people who I think do play the game right and well and makes the game look like very enjoyable to watch, right? But I think from a general standpoint, just cutting the game on, going into ranked or just playing like online matches, just it just, you can't see what makes that game good. I think what, what makes Street Fighter 4 good is you could see what makes it good if you just turn it on. That makes sense? Like you turn the game on and you play the game even at an intermediate level, it's like, damn, this game's fun. Or it has cool things in it that like make it enjoyable to play because you have to be good at a lot of... There's certain skills you can learn from that game that do carry over. I think every game gives you that. I think now since it's hindsight for me watching like that Daigo Momochi, it's like I've learned so much just studying that match. And it's helped me strive drastically. The scales, that scales based on level, yeah. You can say that i think that's why i feel like five i don't mind watching five i think I, I think i think five has master class to it it's just you don't get to see it as much yeah i agree with that in, like yeah in terms of scalability in terms of skill skill level yeah I, I agree with that yeah i think i think you can tell who's good in five but it's harder <laughs> i guess i guess this is harder and four, I'm gonna be honest with you. I can tell who's good in that game. Offer it, offer it. And four, I feel like I can see who's good. Like without even being amazed, even when I stopped playing, I could tell who was good and who wasn't. And that's because, you know, I had a mod in a deal who I would see play to all these people, and I could tell. I could tell by care. I'm, you know, I'm living through their lens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and seeing how it is. Both of them in long sets offline in both games. There's definitely an aspect of their gameplay that's missing in five to me, especially against Daigo. I can see it. I think it's more so just them conforming to the way that that game's supposed to be played, right? Because when you play a newer game, you always have to conform or you have to break habits, which is something I've been doing in Strive that some people don't seem to fucking understand. Sorry, I had to lift that one out, but like, there's so much I have to break away from from what I know in older Guilty Gear to play this game properly and i think that's not any different between them and four from four to five personally but they get to break habits there's footsie things you have to readjust to 
Especially when you had lag involved, right? So... I think now that's not so much the case anymore, so... But... I don't disagree entirely. I mean, you've played them, I haven't. Right, that's your. That's from your experience. I can't... I can't contest that. <laughs> but... I can say for sure, I like watching them play. Like, every time I watch Tokido play, I'm always... Ex I'm always... I, I get excited because I get to see the little shit. And even when I go back to 4 and I watch... I, I still feel like... 4 has a lot of great moments. And we're still talking about gameplay too, mind you. I just feel like there's just a different class of player within that game. And it was, I don't know, Topanga was just the most fun shit to watch. Not because I see crazy combos and stuff like that. I just enjoyed watching them play that game at that level. It was interesting. And like trying to play, I think trying to play the game at that level also was fun. I think that's probably where some of the most fun of the game for me came from. Was trying to play that game at that level. And like working at it and playing it for hours on end to see if I could do it. And this, it was challenging. I think I had got pushed, and that made me really good at the game. But there were definitely some things I didn't like. And those things definitely turned me off. It's mostly just watching Fei Long walk, walk away from footsies. I had gotten over Akuma. Akuma didn't bother me. Akuma was an annoying thing. But that's when I played Viper. When I played Ibuki, it's a different story. But... I was really good at that matchup. <laughs> I was really good at that matchup. So... It was easy to showcase more diverse approach and play style in 4 versus 5-2. I've got better in this regard, maybe. I think so. I think the good thing about 4 was you had a lot of character specialists. But I think some people would attribute that to esports, right? Because esports this, esports that, money, money this, clout that. You would like I think it's I think it's it's like it would be easy to just say it's because of esports is why it's like that, you know? Which I think is kinda kinda tough. I think that was kinda tough. But that's just me. Right, that, that's just me in that regard. But, 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 I think, um, I, I enjoyed watching character specials. Like, Ada One Strider was one of my favorite players for a good while. Because it was just cool to just see him literally dismantle people with Abel. And he stuck with the character. You know, he can play other characters too, but like, I think I, I enjoyed watching character specials do their thing. And I think it's because in 4, bouncing around was bad. I think the only person that could do it at that level was it was infill and even then i think infill was kind of like the knee from tekken of street fighter 4 right i could play all the characters at a high level and like body fools they could just do it but i think it's because he spent mad time trying to figure all that stuff out and that's not something you're gonna see from people nowadays you know i think there's only so many people that are willing to sit there and put in the time to play the characters on that level. And be able to bust them out in tournament if they needed a counter pick or something like that, you know? You don't really, you don't, you don't really get to see that. Um, but, all in all, I would say the commitment aspect of 5 is good and bad. It has its good and it has its bad. I just think I would, love to, I would have loved to have seen the game have more layers to it in terms of offense and defense. I think that's really it. I like a lot of the offensive options the game has. I do think that, like, I could probably play that game really well, but I feel, in some cases, like, while I like Rushdown, I also don't like my pressure to be free. You know, and I do think in some cases, early on in Street Fighter V, people got pressure pretty freely. So, but I mean, we all know this. We all can agree that Street Fighter V's pressure game is still... It's still a bit of an issue, which is why I say I wish that there was a bit more in terms of layers of defense. Because throw is still too strong. And they haven't really adjusted throw, which I think is bad. But that's overall just my opinion on that. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to talk about single player content they got here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't give a shit. I don't play fighting games for single player content. But I will say from a single player content standpoint, I'll use it from training mode purposes. Street Fighter 5, Dumpster, Street Fighter 4 in terms of training mode. But I love training mode. So that's all I'll give it in Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5, single player content. Balance? Mm. I think both games have had really, really, really bad balance. But I think AE 2012 has a huge degree of outplay potential. I think that's still peak Street Fighter 4 to me. I think 2012 was by far the best version. 
I think Ultra, I think Ultra is probably overall the best version, right? Of Street Fighter 4. But I think 2012 was like the starting point of that, I guess. Which I would say if, if they stopped at 2012 and didn't do Ultra, I still think 2012 was, if you left it there, that would still be the, like the definitive, right? Yeah, I th I think you would most people would say 2012 because it doesn't have Elena, <laughs> but I think a lot of the quality of life things of Ultra were really good, right? Yeah, popular opinion is 2012 is overall like I think it's just when you come from a quality of life standpoint, Ultra did a lot of good quality of life things, but I think even. Despite those quality of life things, I think 2012 is pretty good. Pretty good. My overall. Um, I think where Street Fighter V is now, it's pretty good. But prior to that, oh, it was god awful. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I I think I would play Ultra if it had one more bounce match. It didn't take him five years. You ain't wrong about that. <laughs> I think I think Ultra with one more patch would have been the definitive. I I don't disagree with that. I think Ultra would have been the definitive. It it needed it. I think Street Fighter Four needed one more year though. It needed one more update, and then go to five. It needed because it only had like what a year. It had two Evos, but the first Evo wasn't even like. wasn't even six months with Ultra out, right? That was the one that. Um, what's the name one, right? Uh, Luffy. And then the next one, then we had like a full year with it. So Street Ultra only really had like a year and a half when you break it down. That's really it. Which I think wasn't enough. I think it needed, I think it needed one more year. And let Street Fighter V could. One more year. Just one more year. I think five could have been better. On release. With one more year of Street Fighter IV. So, I think five would have been more well received. And I, even I think from a honest standpoint, I probably would have enjoyed five more if, I think I would have probably played Ultra again and then been more excited personally for five afterwards. It would have been insane because having the players, I don't know, the events that were up, leading up to five were really good. I, it's one more year, it's one more year, one more year. Ultra gets another version and five completed up to a season three by the time it comes out a year later, yeah. I, I, I do think 5 would have been a better game if Ultra had a, a longer, just one more, just one more year, dude. I don't, and you know, even though I didn't play it at that time, even I still agreed that I think Ultra needed one more year. Even if it does, even if it wasn't a patch, just one more year of the game. Let it, then let it evolve. No patchwork, but just let it evolve. Just let it evolve. And it would have been it. It would have been it. I think that's, that, oh man, Capcom would have been in such a better position, I think. I think. I can't speak on online or anything like that, but I think Street Fighter V as a package would have been better just with one more year of dev time. But yeah, they fucked up. But yeah, from a balance standpoint, I think Street Fighter V now is a bit better. And I think 4 had pretty decent balance across the board, more or less. Uh, watchability... I won't lie. I think Street Fighter Four is more watchable. In the grand scheme of things. like. If we were to put them side by side, I think Street Fighter V is more watchable now than it's ever been. But I think four takes the cake because I have to give I have to give four credit for one major thing. It's also the time frame. I think the fact that it was the newest Street Fighter out at the time, especially not having a new Street Fighter for so long, it made sense. It made sense. And I just think watching the different regions, and I, I don't know, it's still the time with offline. So many offline events, so much tech. It was a new era for fighting games at that time. So I think it, that also plays a big role. And obviously the names. So, you know, I think, I think four definitely wins in the watchability department though, overall. I think so. I don't even want to use their other metric with roster. So I don't really care about that. I think the roster is relative to the game. Yes, some in FGC who call Street Fighter 4 the revival of fighting games. Revival of Street Fighter, not fighting games. 
But I think it definitely opened up other doors for other developers. To say that this market is still good at the time. But yeah. Now I want to touch base on the pandemic thing that was talked about earlier. I think there is a degree of correctness there. Like four didn't have to do, deal with a global pandemic or anything like that. Right? The game was out. None of that was an issue. Yada yada yada. So and there's more there was more offline, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think if five didn't have to deal with the pandemic and have to extend what they were doing, I do think it could have been different. I think 2020 in particular, 2019 going into 2020 could have been different. But of course, we can say it could have been different. And I, I think one of the reasons why I think it's fair to say that. Hi, Destiny. I think one of the reasons why it's fair to say that, right, is because it's it's also fair to say that one more year of Street Fighter 4 could have been better for Street Fighter 5. So I feel like in some cases you have to be fair with what we think is like. What we think is, is, is fair in that regard, I suppose. 